Okay. Hello, hello. I think I'm live. Am I live? Am I alive? Kind of. Organised chaos as per usual. I need a drink. And I think I need to line up my table. Gosh, anyone would think I've never done this before. Oh, totally nailing the rookie thing today. I've even got my chair. Hello, Wendy Kavanagh. How are you, my love? I could do the whole thing squatting with my buns of steel, but but no. Um, oh, where's my glasses? Oh, Lou, my glasses are out there on the. Thank you. You're my favourite person. Hello, Shirley Henry. Rightio, welcome to, hello Naomi, welcome to, welcome to Friday, welcome to Friday, as you can tell I haven't cleaned up from the last online, I know, what have I been doing with my time, I don't even know, alright, welcome to Friday, welcome to Friday, the um, international, oh, Sorry, guys. I have to. I can't work on a crooked. There we go. Welcome to the Great International Craft Show. My name is Natalie May. We are involved in the online show this weekend. And uh, as part of the online show, I am here to make some something interesting for you. Hopefully interesting for you. Uh, have a little bit of a play. We have an amazing amount of specials available at nataliemay.com.au as part of the uh, Craft Alive online event. Now, these are specials that we have available for one day only. Stencils are 15% off. Tim Holtz, 15% off. Paper Rose, 15% off. Plus, we've got some great clearance specials available and Christmas 2023 is 30% off as well. So we have got lots and lots of bargains. Plus we have a great postage special. Our postage special is if you do your first order and you pay your $11.95 postage, which is our flat rate postage, you will then receive a secret code in an email, in your confirmation email, so that you can jump online and uh, put all your orders together. You good? Mm -hmm. You're looking for the mouse? Yeah. Oh. So there you go. All right. Now, today I am having a bit of a play with some Tim, Hal Tim Holtz products and some bits and pieces from our store. Uh, this is a project that I created... That about seven years ago uh, easily and it has been on our shelf here in the store it stands up like this and it's just a wonderful little dust collector as we like, like to call it um, we I'm going to show you how to make something like this uh, we're in the process of adding a few little bits and pieces online and you'll be able to Create a similar thing yourself at home. Now, this particular project, I have used Seven Dot Studios uh, papers and Natalie May scrapbooking chipboard. Now, I'm going to create it today with Natalie May scrapbooking collage paper, Tim Holtz collage paper, and some paper rose items. Um, in this one, I have used some Lindy's in the back. Today I'm going to use a combination of Distress Oxides and also watercolours. So I'm going to keep it nice and simple for you. Alright. So I'm going to start with three chipboard tags. And I've got these three arches here. 
Uh, very first thing I want to do is get some double sided tape on the back uh, so that we can join them all together. Uh, so I'm just going to use some Expressit double sided tape. My blade's gone. And I'm going to create a Do you want me to do that, Lou? No. You're going to nail it? I'm going to create uh, something to tie it all together to give it some strength. Okay, so peel the back off. So when I use double-sided tape, uh, we only stock here Express It double-sided tape. Express It double-sided tape is an Australian brand and it is the bee's knees. It is the good stuff. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one down in the middle. And the good thing is here is I've got my craft mat. I can use my lines to line everything up so it's straight. And then this one, I'm gonna leave a little gap so that it folds. There, there, and there. So these tags will be online a little bit later today. They will be available for you to purchase. Um, at the moment, they are not. Well, they can be. They just won't have a picture. <laughs> they can be, but they won't have a picture. There They'll you go. They'll look exactly like that. There you go. There'll be a set of three, quite inexpe inexpensive and uh, Louise and I will add a photo to that later. So this is just um, some some craft cardstock I am using to what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking at the people laughing at us. Oh there's people watching. Oh, how about that? All right. So I'm going to use that and now it's going to stand up and it's going to fold like so. This is just a nice little gift for people. You could, um, you know, just a nice little dust collector as we like to call them. Did I do the same thing here? I did. I did one front and back with this one. So let's do the same thing. Let's give it that extra little bit of strength. And I do love that Express It double sided tape. You can pick it up, put your thumb on it and tear it. And after 10 minutes, it is set, it is stuck for good, and you have got a product that is not going anywhere. How did you go there, Louise? Yeah, tell Naomi it's up. Tell Naomi it's up. Not in my scrapbooking, arch, chipboard, tag, no photo. Did you get that, Naomi? Right. This is going to give some strength all the way through, and I've actually lined that up perfectly. So now it's going to fold happily, and it's not going anywhere. Rightio, the next thing I want to do is put that in bin, and then I'm going to cover this. And I'm going to cover this with book paper. And keep it keep it super simple and just use some book paper. Now you can use gel medium to stick this on, but I am just gonna keep it very, very real here and just cover it with sorry do you three? Yeah, I just want to knock over the gin express. <laughs> Don't knock over the bottle of gin. Don't ask why there's a bottle of gin in my office. That's okay. Just for Fridays, people. Right. And I'm just going to, for, the, for today's argument, I'm only going to um, cover the front of this. And I'm just going to use double-sided tape all over for this one. Um, what's Yeah, no, this, this is a good size tape to use. And it won't matter if I go edge to edge. Right to that edge, right to this edge. How's everybody's day going? 
It's a little moist here in Adelaide. <laughs> it is it is raining all the cats and all the dogs. Um, but we've had a wonderful day. I just had a lovely customer drop in, come and pick something up and drop in a coffee for me. So that was a very nice surprise for my afternoon. Uh, and Lou and I have just had lunch. I peel this off and work one panel at a time. So we have had it pretty easy to, to well I've had it pretty easy today. Louise has been working her pants off. Right. So you could cover this in any sort of patterned paper. So with my original I used seven dots papers which I really like because they're quite neutral. Um, conveniently I think that this is the perfect size. So I'm going to take that to the right to the edge of my tape and stick that down and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I don't mind that I've got that there because I'm going to be adding some collage elements but I do need to trim this down before I put it on. So let's just wing it and see if I can be clever and Lou could you grab me another one of these tags please so I can use it as a template to tape to trace just trace you can have it back I was gonna say because we don't have spares no they won't I don't need spares oh look battle of wits oh that describes Louise and I look at the title there oh, cool. so I'm going to use that so should you pre-cut your paper first before you, you could the tags together? you could do that if you wanted to do it the easy way but you know have your tag back I wouldn't be creating on the fly if that was the case, would I? Nobody likes the smarty pants. Michelle is up at Monato. Not much rain yet at Monato. Isn't that interesting? There's plenty of, plenty of, um, it's, it's very cold. Uh, but it's, it's nine, it's nine degrees. Louise just went out and got uh, lunch for us. And it's, um, Sit in the car, nine degrees. Right. I don't know what the book is. I have deleted. Actually, I'll go this way. Ripped the cover off it already, so. Alright, so now it is covered. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And now I can just use my blade to run down in a very rustic way because we are just wanting to create a nice little base for this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Use scissors if you need to. No, I'm better with a knife than I am the scissors. But this is very old book paper, so it is tearing. more than it is cutting. So I would do the back as well. Uh, what I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna be adding some, a very light coat of clear gesso, maybe. Eight degrees in Canberra. That's a no from me. Mind you, let's be honest, I'm inside, it's fine. Have people been seeing Karsha's photos? Yeah, have you guys been seeing Karsha's photos at all? Maybe no one's friends with Karsha on Facebook. Karsha's up in the snow. 
at Bore Bore. It's called, um, and it is absolutely beautiful up there. She has since she's been putting some gorgeous photos on Facebook. Um, heaps of snow. Heaps of snow. All right, there we go. We are covered, and I'm happy with that. Um, I might add some a very light coat of clear gesso. So clear gesso is just going to give me a bit of a sealer before I add the collage paper, and it's just going to seal that paper because this is just old book paper. So it's a pretty old, fragile sort of paper. It's not meant for this purpose but we are using it for this purpose. There's no reason why we can't. And like I said, it's only a thin coat, but it's just going to give this project that little bit more strength uh, and going to work nicely. But oh yeah, look at that, it's soaked right in. I now need my heat tool. It's been snowing in the hills in the ACT. So the breeze is quite cool at the moment. Jeez, I bet it is. Naomi doesn't like the snow. I haven't been to the snow since I was maybe 10 or 11 and I got tonsillitis about 12 minutes after getting there. And I remember having to sit in the cabin with my grandmother who had to babysit me the whole time. Uh, you can only imagine how thrilled she was, um, but I do remember that distinctly. <laughs> it's amazing what you remember, hey? All right. I've got some exposed tape on the back that is playing havoc here, so I'm just going to cover that up. So I would like to go back to the snow as an adult. Um, I think that would be really, really lovely. Okay, uh, okay, let's start to get a little creative here. So before adding on my collage paper, I'm going to get a little bit of white gesso and give it a little bit of a wash. I don't want to cover it completely. It's going on quite rough. And again, the technique that I'm showing you today is very much a, a technique that you can use on cards, you can use on art journal pages, you can use on anything that you like. Um, today is all about showing you something fun and easy and something that you can perhaps transfer to your own crafting. Really, really important. Hello, Susie. So Lou's just bringing in, while I'm drawing this, there's two other uh, tags, set of tags that we are showing you. Fancy. Fancy tag, because it's got a bit of fancy stuff at the top. And then the... Square. Square tag. That's very creative of you. <laughs> so these will come in a set of three for a very lovely, easy price of... $5.95, okay? Um, I love that. Radio. So let's use some of these Tim Holtz collage papers that I had out this morning. And I'm going to use these to create some interest on my page. I want to get rid of this sharp edge. I don't want sharp. I want, or straight, I want that. And we're going to use gel medium to stick that down with a dry paintbrush. So just bear with me while I find a dry paintbrush. Got all the things, all the tools out today. So just be prepared for a heck of a mess, but you know, I'm gonna nail it. Right. Gel medium on collage paper. Okay, we're creating some interest in our background before we Oh, look at that, I like it. Before we add on our elements. So this is um, a little bit more advanced than the original one that I did. The original project I created 100 years ago, it feels like. 
Um, that was using just stamping in the background and stamping in the background with some Lindy's. This particular project, I'm getting a little more creative with my elements. My collage elements in the background here. Putting those on gel medium, smooshing. Feel like there needs to be something up there. Done. And I'm going to dry that off and then I'm going to get some colour on. Got to make sure this is totally dry. I might even put some clear gesso over it just to take it, to make sure that the gel medium is not going to resist to whatever I'm going to put on next. Oh, throwing my rubbish in the bin for a change instead of keeping my scraps for a rainy day. Because, you know, that's what we do. Melting the packaging here is that. Oops. And just thinking about it, I have this vintage handwriting collage paper. Um, maybe we could use some of this as well. So this is one of mine. And I think that this might be a nice touch of something here. And... I might pop a little bit on here as well. Pop it up there, pop it there, and pop some there. Oh, yeah. Now that I've wet my paintbrush. So for those just tuning in, Naomi, uh, our brand, one of our brand ambassadors, is just linking the products that I am using in the comments. So if you see something and go, oh, you know what? I need that. What's she using? I missed Natalie talking about that or Natalie forgot to talk about that. Then what you can do is just have a look through the comments and you'll find that Naomi has listed the items that we are using. So thank you very, everyone give Naomi a little thumbs up and a thank you. Do appreciate. Let's get a bit of gel medium on here. So gel medium is my adhesive. We are not using glue because it just won't work as effectively that as a as gel medium. So gel medium is kind of like a decoupage sort of blue of glue, which is what we're doing. But this is more suited for the purpose that we are using it for. Now, I am one of those people that needs to have all of my words going the same way. So we're also keeping, if anyone else noticed, and has Linda might have mentioned, messaged it, mo, uh, messen, <laughs> mentioned it, um, I'm keeping with the typography theme that we have got happening over in our creative community at the moment and with our artist trading cards. We all have a typography theme this month. All my words, all horizontal, all go the right way. And I'm going to try and clean up as I go. Right, sealed. Sealed, signed, sealed and delivered. So, yes, Naomi is making it very much, much easier for us to be able to find those things uh, on our website. And I'm going to be testing her in a minute. I can tell you right now. Put her to the test. So let's just dry that off quickly. Layer on layer on layer. And you can see all of those beautiful words from our book paper coming through. You can see all of that collage paper here coming through. And we're starting to introduce some colour in with these vintage tones. 
Right, I'm just going to give that another clear gesso. So the reason I'm giving it clear gesso, and this is the Dina Wakely clear gesso, is because I want to make the surface the same all the way across the project. Sometimes when you use uh, a gel medium, it can offer a resist. So if I add something on here like an ink, like a water-based ink or a um, or like a Lindy's Magical or a spray or something like that, it will resist the colour because I have added something in there as a bit of a barrier. So what gesso will do is seal it and make the paper the same surface all the way across to work on. It's a little bit fiddly, but it does pay to work, it, it does work really well for doing this. Um, and this little bit of prep work makes your finished project completely and totally worth it. So welcome to those of you who are just tuning in for the first time. Uh, my name is Natalie May and we are creating today a little off the page project, uh, a little dust collector as we like to call it here uh, in, uh, for the Great International Craft Show. We have some fantastic one day specials available on our website which is nataliemay.com.au. So for today only, we have 15% off of stencils, we have 15% off of Tim Holtz products and 15% off of Paper Rose products. Uh, we do have some awesome Paper Rose products in stock, including their Sentiments and their 12 by 12 papers, as well as what they're really well known for, which is their stamps and dies. So make sure that you have a look online and see if there's something to suit you. We have a wonderful postage special as well. After you place your first order, you can add to your order over the weekend for a very low cost of free. We, uh, you will receive a, a discount code in your confirmation email and you will then be able to apply that at the checkout for your next order. I've got an old nail file here. Um, what I like to do is go along now and file off this extra paper. Because tissue paper is really thin, it should just file off and smooth off those edges really nicely. And if you put it on an angle, it'll just tear right off. So this is my go-to trick for working with chipboard. Uh, many, many moons ago, I <laughs> worked and used to run a, uh, a company called Imaginarium Designs. I think a lot of you might remember that. Um, my old boss from Seriously Scrapbooking, Jane Tregenza. We started up that company, Imaginarium Designs, and designed chipboard and taught with it for years and years and years. And this is one of the tricks that I learnt back then. Much easier than using scissors and getting a sharp edge. Now I have got something nice nice and smooth all the way across. I'm going to bring that up to camera for you to have a bit of a look at. So most importantly, it's all nice and smooth. Now we can add the good stuff. We can start designing some bits and pieces. So let's have a look at our original one again. So our original project that I'm basing this on is a combination of chipboard and tags, music paper, Bits of cotton and chipboard. Chipboard, yeah, yeah, okay, yep, that works. I wonder if I can find some cotton. I can do that. But before I do that, I'm gonna start laying anything, everything out. I have some chipboard here. This is called the Grid Mesh Chipboard. Go, Naomi. It's actually, I think it's in here, Lou. I, I actually know where it is. Get out of here, here it is. Look, I can put my hand on it. Oh. Done. 
Do you need a small? I don't need any. I don't need any for it. Okay, grid mesh, grid mesh chipboard. I'm going to be using this in my project. Uh, you'll find this on our website under chipboard. I have pre, I have cut out some of the tags left over from yesterday. So these were from our vintage tags cutable. And I have also cut out in anticipation some vintage ephemera as well. So I have cut a whole heap out ready to go there. Uh, also, I have got some paper rose, inky color, cutter parts and die cuts. These have been incredibly popular and very, very awesome to use. So this is excellent value for money. These ones are ready for you to cut out. Uh, <laughs> this packet doesn't. My daughter's messaging us. Okay, good on you. Um, okay, so this this gets this sh blah 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 blah. Eighteen sheets, six designs, three of each. Okay, so this one is for you to cut out. Oh, the other one is just this one out. is the embossed die cuts. These are four A5 sheets, um, and they're die cuts and embossed. I'm going to be using this one today. Have you taken it offline? Yes, I have. All right. Because I have done enough fussy cutting for the day. So what I'm going to do... A handful of tags. Stop it. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? They are nice. Can you see that on screen they're a little shimmery? Is it showing up? No, of course not. Okay. So I'm going to choose here what elements I'm going to use. I feel like houses, clocks, I've got three tags, right? So I need consistency. So this is how I'm planning out this project here. I've okay, got one, house. two, three houses. Um, Can I have a big bird house? I'm not having a bird house and I'm not having a cat house. But I do like, I do like this the lady. Heart. I do like this lady here. I mm. could put her in the middle. Or do we like this one? Which lady do we like better? What, that one? This one? Mm. All right. Take it out. Okay. Let's commit. But she's got to be connected to something because she's a floating head. Don't want to give her a body. Don't want to give her a body. That's just going to look stupid. <laughs> right. So she's going to go in the middle, and then we're going to do a house on one side. And is that too much of a birdhouse? Yeah, it is. Mm. Uh, and this one goes on the other side. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. She's going to go there, but she's going to be... She's a, she needs to be connected to something. Put her in a clock. Coming out of the suitcase. <laughs> she's coming out of a suitcase. <laughs> she's being... <laughs> 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 she's what? What's that word you're trying to get out of? Mm. Someone chopped her head off. Someone chopped her head off. She's been attacked by... A, it's a very cute bunny. It is. Okay, let's put that one aside. <laughs> don't want to grab that again. Um, I do like the clock. Hmm. Or you could use the whole girl. This one? With no, no face? No, no. Well, I see. Oh, that little girl. Would that work? Yeah, that could work. No, no. Um, okay, let's poke this one out just in case. Right, so here's my pop of colour for my project. Okay, but I want my background. Pop those there. Has Naomi going? Linking like a boss. Okay, I'm going to have some of this. I'm going to have some of these tags, but I want to add my colour on my background first. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do that with some watercolours. Oh, get out of my way. Get out of my face. Um, these are the Natalie May scrapbooking watercolours. Quite inexpensive. All I do is take a water spray and 
give them a juice up. Okay, this way you can grab them. I need a juicy paintbrush. Juicy paintbrush, where are you? First world problems, I've got too many paintbrushes. Okay, I'm going to start with grabbing some of this brown and I'm going to make a little puddle on my mat here. And I want a juicy puddle. I want a really juicy puddle. And I'm just going to get some colour on. Not too much, just a little bit. Doesn't need to be very much. Just needs to be in a splatter. So I'm doing a finger tap to get the colour off my brush. And then I'm just spreading it around with the edge of my brush. Um, and keeping it really quite, oh, what's the word, haphazard. So I could also do this with Distress inks and oxides. It'll work in a very, very similar way. I do have them here in front of me. I haven't decided if I'm going to use them. I am, however, going to grab a little grey because it's quite neutral. But it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm not looking for perfect because this is going to be about the images, okay? It's going to be about that. It's not going to be about anything else. I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to add a little bit of navy blue. And I'm going to use navy blue because there's some blue in here. And as we learned from our last class, blue and brown can look really, really very nice together on a mixed media project. So if you wanted to catch my, or go back and watch my live Facebook from this morning or even the one from yesterday, you can just scroll on through and go back and watch that. Uh, I will upload them to YouTube possibly tonight. Um, depends if I sit down and have a glass of wine or not. Um, one of the staff members here at, the, at Natalie May Scrapbooking is partaking in Dry July and it's not me. So I will be having a glass of wine alone tonight, which cracks me up, which is great for that particular staff member to do dry July, but come on. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of black to my blue to make it a bit more navy. The only staff member I have this week, other than you, Naomi, yes. Wow, that's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. So, paper towel, roll over the top and tones it back a bit. Sorry, I've just hit concentration mode. Can't talk and concentrate at the moment for some reason. I don't want too much colour. I want the hero to be this background paper and the hero is definitely going to be the elements. And then knowing when to stop is important. This is a really quite inexpensive little uh, set of watercolours and they're really lightweight as well. So if you are wanting something with a nice punch of colour to go travelling with, that's going to give you a small palette with a good punch of, uh, a good range of colours, then this one I believe, Naomi, can you tell me how much this is off the top of your head, please, champion? I think I'm going to say $18.95 something quite inexpensive like that
fourteen ninety five. Well, that's a bargain. All right. This is taking forever to dry now because I'm watching it. Okay, while that is air drying, I'm going to let that organically do its thing. We are, I'm going to put those away. And I'm going to have a look at some of these little elements that I've cut out. And I'm going to ink the edges of them. So I'm going to ink the edges in my black archival ink. Because I want them to be pretty punchy. We've got some deep de depth of colour in here. So just using a makeup wedge to go around the edges. I like to use a makeup wedge because it um, is quite disposable. They're inexpensive. You, I just buy them in bulk on Amazon. Um, I don't sell them. I find that... You shouldn't, I just don't think you should have to pay for something that you're going to throw in the bin 12 minutes later like this. If you're going to reuse the, the round ones like this, which is what I do, I wash those, um, then absolutely they're an excellent consumable product. So just going around the edges and in a minute when this is dry, I will be edging that. I want some of these big key pieces. So these are from our vintage ephemera cutables. So they are designed to go beautifully with Tim Holtz product. Um, Kasha and I worked really hard on these to try and um, use images that are going to coordinate with more than one project. And that was really, really important. Taking quickly, just taking the edge off, not being too perfect and particular about it, but ensuring that we take away all of those white edges because they are going to stand out and we don't want that to happen. Question now, what did you use to connect your tags? Um, so you'll be able to go back and watch this video um, and Naomi has very graciously answered the question there for me because my head's down and I'm inking. Um, I just use some craft cardstock which we sell by the sheet and they were cut into a four inch strip and I added those front and back. So when I finished filming today I will save this and you'll be able to go back and watch it from start to finish but if you just use a piece of heavyweight craft um, and leaving a gap in the middle you will find that that will work really quite well uh, all right let's get into it so I have inked some of those and then if I need any extras I will ink as I go Don't you love that I pre-fussy I, I pre fussy cut those? Yes. Okay, let's start with this key image in the middle. I'm gonna start with creating a bit of a bit of interest. My images that I'm gonna use are the girl here, and I think that she needs to be inked as well because she's pretty stark on the edges. Right, let's crack into it. I've got some foam dots. Love these. I think they're like $2.85 or something incredibly inexpensive. Okay, this bit of chipboard, I'm going to keep coloured as is. It does not need anything else. This has been, uh, this piece I designed probably 15 years ago uh, when I was designing chipboard for with Imaginarium and I have used it again and again and again and again. So I'm actually going to cut that up there and I'm going to slide it in here. So I've got these little bits coming out. I might put it on that side actually with a bit of glue.
bit of glue. So adding chipboard is all about adding texture. Texture is going to make it look like you've done more to it than you actually have, which we love that look. Uh, my clock here, let's ink the edge, take away that dusty. Naomi, I'm impressed with the forethought. I don't do that. What are you talking about? What did I miss? Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I might take a, a little, oh, the fussy cutting, do you mean? Ooh, that's a nice spot for that. So quick, pop that on there. Oh, I haven't stuffed that down. Then I've lost it. There it is. Yeah, the pre-fussy cutting. Lou raced out and grabbed us, grabbed us some lunch, and I used that time to go. Oh, let's do that. Let's add some fussy cutting. Um, black cotton is a very, another very textural embellishment that I like to use. Uh, I'm going to put that clock there. One, two, one, two. And I can go back in and add more elements, like more, more adhesive later. For the time being, if I can get the back off of these, which doesn't want to come off because, there we go. Bit of glue, push the cotton down in there, the glue dries clear, then it looks a bit bundled up. Uh, haven't decided about the house. I might just put some words in there later instead. Or a little, let's whack a ticket in. This, uh, Naomi's just linked in there. Good pick, Naomi. This is my go-to metal knife. I have been using this for years and years and years. In a previous lifetime, I worked, I've worked in a couple of different industries. Um, I worked in a printer's here in Adelaide for a number of years uh, and, and an advertising agency. And we used to use all these sorts of bits and pieces all the time. You find the right tools for the job and you stick with them. So my Alpha Craft knives have traveled with me from job to job to job over the years um, and are very, very handy. Oh, I forgot, I'm gonna add some cotton. Okay, nothing more than that. Bit of glue. That's going to be enough to hold that down. Anyone who has done any projects with me, uh, like online classes and kits and things like that, you'll notice I've used this chipboard on quite a few different projects. And that's because it's really versatile and textural. And you want to be able to look at something and go, oh, I love what she did there. What did she do there, actually? How do we how do we incorporate that into a project? How do we how do, how can I how does she get that looking like you want to touch it? And that that's what I like about it. Oh, I didn't ink it. All right, I've got room in here that I can tuck in some more chipboard. Snip. 
snip, snip, because I haven't glued it to within an inch of its life. I like it. And I've got one of these tiny little baby tags here. I've got one here with a little bit of colour on it. I'm just going to ink the edge. So these are from our cuttable sheet. And I'm going to cut the bottom off and glue that and tuck that into there. Happy with that, happy with that. The grid chip board. Um, Alana's just commented saying, I love the grid chip board, it's so versatile. Yeah, and I think that's one of the main reasons I like it is um, I just wanted something that you could use on a masculine project or a feminine project. You could add it onto just about any project. And you can see what I'm doing here with this cotton. I just want it to look placed yet organic. Ooh, okay. Done, 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 and done. I, I feel the need to go through with a stapler, but not yet. Uh, and this is going to have some sort of word here. Uh, and then this side will do the same thing. We're going to build up with this side. And I'm going to start with that right there and let's commit to it and glue it down. This has got a slightly different house. I think I might just go with this house this time. But I'll ink it before I forget. Project's taking a little longer than I would like, but I'm enjoying every single minute. Okay, pop that there. Pop that there, but before I stick it down, I'm going to get some cotton. And drop it like it's hot. And stick it. Look, there's a corner there that craves a piece of chipboard. Glue. Shove. Stick. Straighten. House is still going to go down here. I've still got some room here for a tag. And a little ticket off the side. Oh, there's a spot there for some chipboard. So I could have inked this chipboard first or made it a different colour, um, but I have opted to just whack it down. And commit. So for those of you who have just tuned in, I apologise, I'm completely in my head here, um, just me making and creating and whatnot. Oh, Susan's back. Oh, she's up in the, up in the northern, actually, no, you're in the top of Western Australia at the moment, aren't you? Um, enjoying the Kimberley, one of our lovely customers. 
and Louise and I have looked at um, Susan's photos every single day with incredible jealousy um, and envy. She is having the time of her life and we love that. Living life, that's what it's for. Okay, um, I've made a bit of a mess down here, but that's okay. Let's just take a tag, take a little something, pop some glue on the back and shove. Okay, happy with that, happy with that. So we are well on truly on the way and everything is stuck down quite nicely, um, creating this nice little element. So if you had some cute little photos of your family, of your people, some nice little words you can add on, you can lay them on the top here. Um, some small size photographs would look nice in this spot, but for creating this lovely little dust collector, as we're going to call it, um, this is really, really lovely. I'm really happy with this. Uh, I'm now going to take my black ink and my sponge, which is getting a little fluffy, and just touch up my edges in a few spots where it's particularly white, like up here. Living her best life, Naomi has said, and you are completely correct. So creating a little project like this is super cute. And look, I've joined it together as a nice little uh, piece, a little display piece. But there's no reason why you can't turn that into a card front. We forget about the simple things like um, adding a bit of glue there. I'm going to take my tweezers, shove that in there. Like adding a bit of cotton onto your page for texture. A little bit of mess. If you can allow yourself to do a little mess, then absolutely. Um, I mean, that could go there. Oh, stuff it. Let's just stick it there. Stop thinking about it. Get it done. Um, now that you can see how these little pieces work, you can add them together on a, on a card front, on an art journal page, on a project that's going to make you smile. Because that's what it's about. It's about making yourself smile, making yourself happy, doing what you love, creating for fun. That's why I call these little dust collectors because, you know, let's be honest, sometimes they are, but the process of making it has released all of those beautiful endorphins that are good for us and made us enjoy the process and smile and, and know that it's going to bring somebody else joy and bring them, you know, bring a smile to their face when they look at it. Uh, and that's what we make things for. We, we do things to make ourselves happy. So don't forget about that, guys. Stop comparing yourself to... Oh, this mine doesn't look like Natalie's. Oh, gosh, of course it doesn't, because you're making it. This is just an example of something that you can do with it. Okay? I am going to add some little Timmy Holtz words to these in a minute. But I've got a couple of areas, especially up here, where I feel the need for some more cotton. Grab a bundle, shove it. I always tuck the edges in though. I don't like the edges showing. Okay, let's bring that up to camera. Okay, am I in, am I in the shot? Let's go down a little. My fingers are wrinkly. Okay, how cute is it? I like it. It's coming together really well. I see a tag book in my future, Naomi says. Yes. So you know what I'm going to do? That actually is a, is a splendid idea. I could do that. I could make the, that into a tag book, but I'm probably not going to. Um, okay. I have got some Tim Holtz snarky small talk comments that are going to be perfect to go on here. Do I put them in black or do I put them in white? Um, I'm a bit unsure, so let's do a little tester and just lay it on there. Is it going to be too dark in black? 
Yeah, I reckon it might be. Let's see if it needs to go on there in white. Well, maybe they do need to be black. Relax, we're all crazy, it's not a competition. I feel like I need something that's not full of smart ass comments. I feel like I need to find another book. All right, I am gonna do that. I'm gonna find something without smart ass comments, snarky comments. I'm gonna find something that's a little bit less smarty pants. Um, and I've got a little bit of color up here that it looks like it needs a bit of color. It's missing, um, that little bit of oomph up there. So how do you fix that problem? You add some more. I know, right? Who would have thought it? So again, it's no different. I go in lightly on here first and choose the color that you think it needs and I'm gonna cover it up and I'm gonna add some spots. And those brown spots are possibly a little bit brown. So I'm toning them back and that's a little bit better. Don't overcook your watercolours if you've got cotton because your cotton will melt and disappear. We don't want that. All right, so I'm going to finish this up. Um, I've used a ton of amazing and easily accessible products and I hope I didn't make this at all look hard for you. It's supposed to be easy. It's, this, is, this is craft. This is our hobby. Uh, and it's supposed to be lovely and fun. So just to recap, this is the project that I started with. This is a project that I made some many, many, many years ago, and I actually, I believe I made it when I was on a cruise ship, to be honest. Um, I used Seven Dots products, which we now have back in stock again, which is amazing. Um, in fact, I do have some seven dots sentiments I might put on them. That's a very good idea, stickers. Uh, I, I use collage paper. We started off with just chipboard, okay? Um, Alana, this is how I have bound it together. So it will fold, it will hold its shape, it will stand up by itself on an angle at that. Look at that, magic. Um, it's supposed to be easy, okay? It's supposed to be a fun thing to do. So allow yourself to do it. But creating that background and creating, like preparing that background properly is what's going to make it work, all right? So don't be afraid to do that. Um, so here at Natalie May Scrapbooking, today only we have got stencils on special at 15% off. And we have got Tim Holtz products at 15% off, which is what I've used today, some, some of today in our project. Uh, we also have Paper Rose pro products at 15% off. There are lots and lots of specials uh, in our clearance section. A lot of products are 30 to 40% off in clearance, already marked down. And that is because we just have one or two or something left on the shelf. So that's about it from me. I'm gonna pop some sentiments on this and finish it up. And uh, the lovely Naomi is gonna pop back here in an hour's time and she's gonna do another live Facebook free mini class just for you guys. So we look forward to seeing you then and I hope you're all having a fabulous Friday. Bye.